expressing trigonometric ratios of an angle in terms of a reference angle. The trig ratio for any angle is either the trig ratio of the reference angle or it's the negative of the trig ratio of the reference angle. So it seems to be what's most important here is getting the trig ratio of the reference angle and then determining whether it's going to be positive or negative. So you could use the following procedure. You can see where the angle terminates, where the terminal arm terminates. Using that quadrant, you can determine whether the trig ratio is going to be positive or negative. Of course, it depends on that trig ratio, whether it's sine, cos, or tan. And then you can determine the measure of the reference angle. Once you know that, you can determine the trig ratio of the reference angle, combine it with the sine of the ratio that you determined from which quadrant it was in, and then combine the two. So to write cos of 11 pi over 8 as the cosine of an acute angle, well, where is 11 pi over 8? Well, we have this. 8 pi over 8 is 1 full pi, and then 3 pi over 8 is going to be in, make it so that it's in the third quadrant. We have a reference angle then of 3 pi over 8, so it's right there. That's 3 pi over 8. And so we can consider then the cos of 11 pi over 8 is going to be equal to negative of the cosine of that reference angle. Cos 11 pi over 8 is equal to negative cos 3 pi over 8. Now I'm going to try and convince you of this concept here by drawing you a picture. Let's pretend we have a full angle starting in standard position that goes all the way to here. And I'll try and draw it accurately there. And then we notice that the height from there to the x-axis is there. Now if we imagine, instead of going all the way around there, we're going to use this triangle and flip it over into the first quadrant. So maybe we'll use a rotation. So this is the reference angle. And we notice if we rotate it just right so that the radius is exactly the same, you'll notice that the red pieces, these red pieces have the same length. So you can imagine that if we were thinking of this as the sine of this particular angle, then we can say that the y value here is, has the same length in both cases. However, the orientation is opposite. This is in the positive y direction, and this is in the negative y direction. But can you be convinced that it has the same length? Let's take a look at class example number four and take a look at cos of 7 pi over 4. And what we want is we want the value of this, but using not this angle, but an acute angle. So let's take a look at where this is. If we were to draw this as a grid, 7 pi over 4 is a full 4 pi over 4 plus 3 pi over 4. It makes it all the way over to there. So this is quadrant 4. And so the cosine ratio in quadrant 4 is actually going to be positive. It's positive in quadrant four. So using that, that's part one. The other part is finding the reference angle. The reference angle is pi over four. Now, how did I get that? Well, two full pi is going to be eight pi over four. And so that is the extra that you have to add to seven pi over four to get a full two pi. So pi over 4 is the reference angle, so we can write that down. Pi over 4 is the reference angle. And now using those two pieces, the cos of 7 pi over 4 is going to be equal to the positive value of cos of pi over 4. Taking a look at B, we have cotangent of negative 100 degrees. So if we find out what that is, remember we're doing this in two parts. Negative 100 degrees is clockwise, so that's this way, 90 degrees plus 10 more. That's in quadrant 3. Now cotangent will share the same sign as tangent in this quadrant. So tangent, we have a negative x and a negative y, so this is going to be a positive. So that's part 1. So this is going to be a positive. And then we're going to say that it's going to be the cotangent and we need to find the reference angle now. The reference angle here, since it's 10 past 90 this way, 
then there's going to be 80 more here. So 80 more. So the two parts, we found the sine, then we used the reference angle. So this is going to be positive cotangent 80 degrees. Let's take a look at sine of 11 pi over 2. And if we were to draw this, then going by 2 here, 2 pi over 2 is here, 4 pi over 2 is there, 6 pi over 2 is here, and then 8 pi over 2, 10 pi over 2, and then we're going to go an extra pi over 2. So that's right, right here. So let's take a look. The sine is going to, in well, sharing quadrant 3 and 4, the sine is going to be negative here. So that's the first part. It's going to be negative. And then it's going to be the value of the reference angle. What is the reference angle? Well, in this special case, since it's on the y-axis, you can go either way. It's 90 degrees this way. Well, you say pi over 2 or pi over 2 this way. So this is pi over 2. So again, two parts. We found that sine is negative in both of these quadrants, so it's negative there. And then it's the sine of the reference angle. Let's determine trig ratios from a point on the terminal arm. Now we can notice which quadrant it's in, but we can also see that we have x and y coordinates, which can be very helpful. So we have an x coordinate of negative 15 here and a y coordinate of 8. So the point P negative 15, 8 lies on the terminal arm of a rotation angle theta in standard position. In standard position means it starts from the positive x axis here and starts there and goes to that terminal arm. So there is the angle theta. So we've marked it on the diagram. Let's calculate the exact length of OP, so from here to P. Now, if you notice from this OP, actually, is the length of r. And so we can see, if we continue this down all the way to the x-axis, we can see we have a y piece here and an x piece here, which means that we can consider Pythagorean theorem to help us. Now, Pythagorean theorem says that r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. And if we're finding r, we what is the value of x? The value of x here is negative 15. That's going to be squared. y is 8 squared. And so we have 225 plus 64. And so r squared is equal to 284, which means then that r is going to be the square root of 284. When we punch that into our calculator, we get 17. Well, r is 17. Well, that helps us out a lot because now we have values for x, y, and r, and that means we can define the trig ratios for this particular angle. So using x as negative 15, y equals 8, and r that we found here, we can determine the exact values. So let's take a look at what they are. Let's we'll start with sine. The sine of this angle then is going to be equal to y over r. Well, that's going to be equal to 8 over 17. Remember that r is always positive. So what about cosine? The cos of this angle is equal to x over r. In this case, x is negative 15, and that will be important to, to have the negative sign in there. So negative 15 over 17. Now what about tangent? Tangent of theta is equal to y over x which is equal to, in this case, the 8 over top of negative 15. So we'll just put the negative in front for 15. So let's just put boxes around there so you can see them. And then we have the primary trig ratios. Well, what about the, the reciprocal trig ratios? Well, the reciprocal of sine is cosines, or sorry, the reciprocal of sine is cosecant. Cosecant theta is the reciprocal of sine, and that's going to be r over y. But you can see it's just the reciprocal of this, 17 over 8. The reciprocal of cosine is secant. Secant theta is equal to 
r over x, and that is 17 with a negative here over 15, 17 over negative 15. And finally, cotangent of theta is the reciprocal of tan. So we have x over y, which will be negative 15 over 8. Let's take a look at class example number 6. We're given that the cotangent of angle A is equal to square root 5 over 2, and also that sine A is negative. We want to know what cosecant A is and secant A. So let's see if we can figure it out. We take a look at this value, and we can see that it's positive, and sine A is negative. Well, if cotangent of A is positive, then that's either in the quadrant 1 or quadrant 3. But sine of A being negative means that we're forced to have the angle in quadrant 3. So since the cotangent of A is equal to the square root of 5 over 2, and we also know that the trig ratio of cotangent A, or any angle, is x over y, then we know that the point must have an x value of negative root 5, and a y value of negative 2. Why do we know that both of them are negative when the ratio only had a positive root 5 or a positive 2 in the beginning of the question? Well, since we know that we were in quadrant 3, we can see that x and y are both negative. Now, x, a negative x over a negative y ends up being positive, but as the coordinates, we must place these negatives in here. So let's draw it. We have this is in quadrant 3, and it's a little less than 45 degrees um, because this is not quite negative 2. So uh, here we have x squared plus y squared equaling r squared. That's a familiar theorem. It's a Pythagorean theorem. We can use that to determine what r is. So let's take a look here. So let's use the fact that we know that x is equal to negative root 5. We also know that y is equal to negative 2. So using that in this form, we could say negative root 5 squared plus negative 2 squared should equal r squared. Well, that means then that r squared is equal to 5. Negative times a negative is positive. A negative times a negative is positive, so this is 4. And I'm going to turn this around and say r squared is equal to 9, which means that r is equal to the square root of 9, and r, we can conclude, is 3. Now that we have an x value, a y value, and an r value, we can determine the exact values of cosecant a. Remember that cosecant a is equal to the reciprocal of sine of a, so that is r over y, which in this case it's 3 over negative 2. So we can include it's negative 3 over 2. And for the secant of A, we have the secant of A is the ratio of R compared to X. And here we know we solved for what R was, it's 3, and the X value is negative root 5. So this is negative 3 over root 5. Now you can notice perhaps what a common error might be. For common error might be forgetting that we have a negative x value or a negative y value and that cotangent of that resulted in a positive. So now you can complete the assignment and I will now see you in class.